We're still learning about how COVID-19 symptoms manifest in the oral cavity as sores and lesions may be signs of infection. Today we're speaking with Dr. Gary Bauman of the Baltimore Center of Advanced Dentistry, who diagnosed two patients with COVID-19 during a recent exam. Dr. Bauman, thank you for speaking with us today. Pleasure to be here. Great. Now let's just begin with these patients. Who were they and how did they come and why did they come to your office? So um, this was a family that's been a long time, long term patients of, in our in our practice. I've mm -hmm. seen the parents uh, for probably almost 20 years um, and we've seen the kids have, as they've grown up as well. Mm -hmm. um, the entire family comes to us. They're a family of six children, mm -hmm. um, of which two, three do not live at home. Okay. Um, and uh, two of the siblings, two sisters, age 17 and 15, came into our office for their usual maintenance visit, recall appointments. Okay. And so uh, when they came in, and did you perform any kind of pre-screening? That seems to be the standard for all dental offices these days. So what's involved in your pre-screening? And did that catch anything at first? So um, just like pretty much every dentist, uh, we do a screening the day before with mm -hmm. the list of questions, uh, mm -hmm. which we assume are related to COVID. Okay. And um, then those patients are asked the same questions the same day from our parking lot. They, they call us when they get to the parking lot. And none of those questions elicited any response um, from the mom who was responsible for them. Okay. Um, just nothing came up. Okay. And uh, when they enter your office, do you use a, a thermometer or any kind of temperature reading? Sure. Um, every patient um, has to wear a mask coming into the office. Uh, their temperature is taken. Uh, they sanitize their hands at the same time. We are fortunate that we kind of have two sides to our practice. And although we used to use one corridor, now we're working in the round. Okay. So patients who are leaving go one way, patients coming in go another way. Okay, so the questions were all clear, the temperature was normal, so they were generally asymptomatic. Correct. Okay, Correct. And, and so once these uh, dental exams began, what did your hygienist see that made them think something might be wrong here? So it's very interesting. My, both my hygienists are very attuned to what's going on with patients. Mm -hmm. um, but they started their normal routine, blood pressure, you know, everything that we normally do. Right. Um, and then at some point, um, one of the hygienists said, wow, there's a lot of bleeding going on here. Mm, okay. And, um, but she still went ahead and did her prophylaxis and, and light scaling, whatever was needed on the 17 year old. Mm -hmm. um, and then she came back. Normally we have a, we have a, uh, a, a call system in our office on the computers. This time she came back to me, and I know when she comes back to me, she's really concerned about something. Okay, yeah. Um, and her comment to me was uh, that this patient normally has exquisite oral hygiene, and I love that word. Exquisite. <laughs> exquisite, because it really evokes what we would love all our patients to have. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't always see that in 17-year-olds. So we know this patient, and we know that she always has just beautiful oral hygiene, et cetera. She said to me, she normally has oral, uh, exquisite oral hygiene. Today, I'm finding a lot, a lot of ble bleeding. And actually, I, I think I see some, some lesions in her mouth. Okay. Now, generally, with a 17-year-old, um, I'm, I'm usually thinking, as I'm walking down the corridor to get to the operatory, I'm thinking, you know what, maybe it's hormonal. Maybe there's something like that going on. Mm -hmm. um, I sit down to look in her mouth and she opens her mouth and I see right away her gingiva is extremely inflamed. Um, before I even see the lesions, I hear out of the corner of my ear, the other hygienist who's across the hall mm -hmm. say to the 15 year old, I'm gonna show you how to floss again because you don't normally have this much bleeding in your mouth. Hmm. And that was the point where my antennae <laughs> just went right up. It was too coincidental. Too coincidental that two, two siblings, I can tell you that and maybe the boys don't have as good oral hygiene when they come <laughs> in, but these two, two young ladies um, who are always, they're, they're just very good. We don't have to usually tell them anything and, and, mm -hmm. and we just clean their teeth. Um, too coincidental that the two of them, now to be very honest, I'm not sure if they would have been in separately that my antenna would have been so raised. Right. Although looking in the 17 year old's mouth, the lesions did look viral. 
Okay. So, so um, how would you classify those lesions compared to cold sores or gum disease or other standard typical uh, manifestations you might see in other patients with other issues? So um, position was a little bit different, but for the most part, these small, the first thing when I looked in her mouth um, on the free gingival margin, on her lip, they looked more like aspic ulcers. Okay. Um, when I brought it up to her, she said to me, she said, yeah, I noticed that I have these, but I, I get these pretty often. Mm, okay. Um, then we looked a little bit further and she had many more than you would expect. This was not an isolated aptus ulcer. Okay. Um, this was much more significant and many more than what we would normally see. Okay. Um, go ahead. Anna, just um, you were telling us before about some of your background. How does that background prepare you for taking a more systemic look at these issues then? So, um, the area that I taught in had to do a lot with medicine and dentistry, mm -hmm. teaching students about different review of systems, of, of what kidneys do, because we know about it, but we don't really think about how much it affects what's going on in the oral cavity. Uh -huh. um, so very often, um, and, and my academic background also, just because we got a lot of these cases when I was in the dental school full time, we'd see these cases after other dentists might not have known what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, I, I'm a little bit more inclined to that. Okay. It doesn't mean that other dentists aren't, don't have that same inclination, right. but I'm right away. Now, of course, having been practicing now for eight, nine months with dealing with COVID, I think we all have to start thinking that, you know, we're seeing patients, there's no question. And especially now this last surge, probably since the fall, we know that there are a lot more asymptomatic cases than were previously. Um, so just to continue the story, I then walked over to the, I said, don't go anywhere. Okay. <laughs> I walked over to the 15 year old and things were much more significant in her mouth. Hmm, okay. Gingiva was ulcerated, raw, um, inflamed. Um, and then I looked under her mouth and uh, under her tongue on the ventral surface of her tongue, she had these huge, huge lesions, hmm. um, not evoking any aptus ulcer or anything like that. Okay. And at that point, right away, I said, something's going on here. Something big is going on here. So what was the next step? So um, the 17 year old uh, got her license recently. So she, she was the one who drove them. Okay. Um, but I called mom right away. And I said, um, again, I have a very close relationship with them. Uh, I said to them, I said to her right away, I said, look, I don't want to alarm you, but I'd really like to test them for, for COVID. Now, one of the good things is that we had started testing. We have started testing in the past four months, doing PCR testing in our office. Mm -hmm. um, we call LabCorp, they come pick it up, and usually within 48 hours, we have the results, which has been a wonderful service for our patients. Okay. For those who think they might have something, we see them in the, with full PPE in the parking lot. We do not bring them into the office. Mm -hmm. so we're not increasing the risk of everyone else. And for those who just come in because they're going to visit their grandchildren, and the kids are saying, we want a negative result, they do come into the office and, and we swab them and, and it's a very simple process. So we have the advantage of that. So within a very few couple of minutes, we had tested both of these kids um, and sent them off. Okay, and, and when you send them off, do you uh, make any recommendations like you should quarantine, you should get in touch with the people you know or work with or so, go to school with? So again, in general, these were the first cases that we saw that were, um, that we could really say was symptomatic. Mm -hmm. Usually the patients that we see in the, in the parking lot already yeah. know maybe something's going on. Although to, to be honest, almost all of them have turned up negative. Mm -hmm. um, so we do mention to them, you know, you may want to quarantine for the four to eight hours until you get the result. Mm -hmm. um, or if they've been in contact with someone that had COVID um, and it's usually a spouse, let's say, that is in, in contact, they know that they have to quarantine until, um, until they get a negative result. Um, and maybe even longer than that. Um, in this case, we did say to mom, they should not be leaving the house. Okay. And, yeah. and how, did, how did you handle this potential exposure among yourself and your staff? What steps did you take to protect you and so your employees? That was actually one of the most gratifying parts of this whole episode, besides the patient part. Yeah. From before we opened back up on May 11th, after a two month uh, hiatus, um, we had been training, even during the eight weeks that we were out, probably two or three times a week, we were having Zoom meetings among our staff 
and mm -hmm. talking about all these things. What's going to happen when we get back? What do we have to do to keep ourselves safe? What do we have to do to keep patients safe? Mm -hmm. And actually kind of running drills about what's going to happen if A happens or if B happens or if C happens. And no one panicked. Okay. No one, no one um, got hysterical about it. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone knew because we never go into a patient's room without full PPE on. Mm -hmm. which includes either an N95 or a KN95 plus a surgical mask without a gown, without head covering, without a shield. No one walks into a patient room without that. Because we had trained for this and because we have taken those, those precautions, everyone was like, okay, we know what we have to do. And we know that we're, we weren't, we're not in really any danger. Mm -hmm. And there was no question that we did not have to close our office. We did not have to quarantine our staff because of everything that we had done. Okay, so just um, having that preparation on hand for months and months and wearing the PPE and enacting all the other infection protocols, you're not concerned about being infected yourself or the members of your staff being infected themselves after being in contact with these patients. Correct. CDC guidelines, ADA has followed those guidelines, are keep checking for symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, if you're in full PPE, there's very, and, and you're following them, donning, doffing, all those other things, there's, there's, um, there's really nothing else to do at that point. Okay. Um, so that was, that was uh, like I said, one of the most gratifying parts of it. And I have the best staff in the world from mm -hmm. front desk to hygienist to, to assistants. And um, I think they appreciate the training, training worked. The training paid off. Training okay, worked. so um, it, it's been some time since uh, those diagnoses were made. How's the family doing? So let me, let me just tell you what the next kind of steps were. Oh, sure, go ahead. Um, they got home and mom called me and said, look, I know you did the PCR testing, but I'd like to take them for rapid testing. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, just make sure that they know that we think they're symptomatic, even symptomatic, we've seen symptoms, even though they're pretty much asymptomatic. Yeah. Um, they went for rapid testing. The, uh, seven, the 15 year old came back positive. Mm -hmm. She's the one who had the worst lesions. 17 year old came back negative. But very smartly, mom said, I'm already here, might as well test me. Uh huh. Mom came back positive. Okay. She calls dad. Dad goes for rapid testing. Uh, within an hour, he's also positive. And he takes okay. the other sibling, who's an 11 year old, who's home, also positive. Hmm. And were they all generally asymptomatic? So the father says two hours after he got the rapid test, he became symptomatic. Oh, okay. So we don't know if he was ignoring it. Or if, <laughs> or, uh, or, he had symptoms and was ignoring it, or if he really had symptoms. But um, sadly, uh, sadly, but everyone, thank God everyone's okay. Um, they had been with their daughter, son-in-law, and six-month-old granddaughter the weekend before for mm -hmm. a holiday celebration. And all three of them went the same day, and all three of them were tested. And they, they've been staying home, working from home and everything, but all three of them tested positive. So um, that just, I think, attests to how easily it spreads through close contact. It seems like almost the entire family was infected. So the 17-year-old actually, we knew she was positive. There was no question yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. She uh, converted zero positive about five days later. Okay, so just so we, did, we had time multiple time. tests taken on them. Mm -hmm. um, so she was just positive. Just took a couple of extra days to actually manifest itself. Mm -hmm. um, Subsequently started working with a researcher um, at Hopkins here in Baltimore, and uh, he did some uh, salivary analysis. Um, and actually, because what we wanted to show was that these are truly COVID lesions, because there are no reports of patients, of doctors, dentists, diagnosing patients through oral lesions. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a, a literature search, and... Um, uh, my daughter, who's actually a physician, a pediatric emergency room physician, she did a literature search. There are some reports of doctors citing um, cases of, of lesions as another symptom. Yeah. Oh, we saw on these COVID positive patients who were, let's say, in the hospital, they have skin lesions, they also have oral lesions. But we couldn't find anything where people have diagnosed COVID through oral lesions. Um, so, and what the, what the, I believe they did uh, uh, from the blood testing, they, um, I believe it was blood testing, they uh, found, or maybe it was salivary testing, they found that there was no other secondary infection like um, HSV or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So pretty much proving that these are COVID lesions. Okay. And, and so um, since this seems to be um, 
a first, as you say, that, that a dentist was able to spot these things and to say, yeah, that's, that's probably COVID. Um, what are some of the clear signs, if you can be a bit more precise about describing these lesions? What should dentists be looking for? If the questionnaire says they're okay, if the temperature reading is normal, what are those things that they, that no, who looks under their own tongue? Exactly. So uh, what should those oral signs be that dentists are looking for then? So um, I, I think unusual lesions or unusual number of lesions. I think if you get a single patient, you know, in a buccal vestibule, you're probably going to say it's an aphthous ulcer. Although mm -hmm. with, the, with the testing as we have it now, which is fairly simple to do, either in your office, if dentists want to start doing this in their office, mm -hmm. um, or just sending them to a CVS or a Walgreens to, to, to get tested, I, I don't think you can be too careful with this. Think about that we had, we had now a family of eight individuals in two households, mm -hmm. um, teachers and other, other, other professions that are out in the public. Imagine how many people they could have infected by continuing along with their routine, especially since... The, the symptoms that all but the father had were all pretty, um, pretty mild. And I don't think, in, individually at least, I don't think they probably would have realized that I'm a little tired, you know, I have a loss of appetite. The father had some more significant symptoms, mm -hmm. which lasted longer, exhaustion and things like that. But all the rest of them, um, really symptoms that you can probably um, replicate with a number of other diseases. Mm -hmm. So I think if you start seeing lesions in the mouth, either in patients who don't normally have lesions or you're seeing a greater number of them um, or unusual looking lesions that look like viral lesions, I would probably <coughs> say, um, don't be too careful. Go send them for testing or do the test yourself. Um, so again, it's going to be very nondescript and hopefully all of the tests come back <laughs> negative. Um, right. But we just, we're very grateful that again, we, we, this could have been hundreds of people that got infected. You want to know how we're seeing the numbers we're seeing in the state, in the United States right now? Mm -hmm. That's the reason, because there's so many asymptomatic cases. And then send, take, take it home to, to mommy and daddy or take it home to grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. who are much more at risk for developing symptoms and getting severe disease. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we want to try to prevent. And just uh, what, a couple of more things then. Um, is the family doing okay now? They are. Um, uh, mom just recently, because we're, I'm just going to try to write this up. To our, my whole goal with all of this is to try to get dentist antenna up mm -hmm. um, to start saying, you know, this is a possibility. Um, we need to be looking out for this. And also to know that don't let your guard down. Now we're getting vaccines and everything else, but don't let your guard down. Don't stop doing the PPE things that you're doing. Don't stop doing the screening things you're doing um, because it's not the patients that come in and say, I have symptoms that we really have to worry about. Just like with everything else, when we went through HIV and everything else, it's the patients that don't know they have it, or I'm telling you, that, that you're seeing that could possibly transmit it to you, your staff, or other patients. Okay, great. Well, thank you for sharing your story today. And uh, hopefully this will have a huge impact on other practicing dentists out there. So now they know what to look for. And as you say, patients don't know they have it. They might be asymptomatic. The questionnaire might be clear. But if you see those lesions, as you say, it's time to get the antenna up. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank great. You thank time. you so much for taking your time with us today. Absolutely. Pleasure. Have a good day.